name is Ian Hawkins. I'm the head of content here at Swoop. I am delighted to welcome you to our webinar, Changes in 2023, Prepare for the End of the Fiscal Year. So a little bit of housekeeping before we get underway. First of all, we really welcome questions today, but please put them in the Q&A box. If you put them in regular chat, they are going to get missed. So Q&A is where they need to be. If you have a question, we really want to answer it. The chat box is where you can drop us a message if you're having any technical difficulties whatsoever. I have colleagues sitting quietly in the background. So if you have any problems at all, they will leap into action and make sure that we are audible and visible once again. My experience of Zoom is that if you come out of the meeting and go back in again, that almost always solves your problems. In any case, this meeting is going to be recorded and posted on swoopfunding.com. It's also going to be across our socials and our YouTube channel as well. So you won't be able to avoid it. If you want to watch it again, recommend us to a friend or colleague. That is where we will be. Uh, we also have a blog post. Is your business ready for the changes that will affect you at the end of the year? And you'll find a really useful roundup of information there. I will copy and paste that link into the chat box for you in a second. Uh, let me just do that uh, now. There we go. Multitasking, everybody. Thank you very much. Today, I am joined by Andrea Reynolds, who is the co-founder and CEO at Swoop. Hello, Andrea. Hi, good afternoon, Ian. How are you? I'm very well. And sitting right next to her is Kieran Burke, who's also the co-founder and COO at Swoop. So hello, Kieran. Hey, Ian. Great. So let's kick off. Uh, energy is quite a big, it's been a huge topic for us. Uh, what is the Energy Bills Discount Scheme? Uh, Kieran. Yeah. It's pretty much a continuation from the, the current scheme that we have with a change in the discounting pricing. Uh, so we'll come into effect from April 2023 and run for 12 months till April 2024. In terms of the kind of important numbers to be aware of, pretty much uh, all businesses, hospitals, charity, etc. Are, are automatically included in the in the scheme and these deductions will come, come out automatically from your bill. But essentially, the, the minimums to be aware of when it comes to electricity is £19.61 uh, megawatts per hour. Um, and for gas, it's £6.97. Um, and the maximum thresholds are £302 for electricity and £107 uh, megawatts uh, per hour. And for those larger uh, businesses kind of that could be in manufacturing or, or classified energy and trade intensive industries, ETIIs, uh, they have slightly different rates where they can get more uh, cash back um, and they can get up to 70% of, of, of that back. Um, so their minimum and maximums are 89 minimum on the electricity, maximum 185 and £40 minimum on the gas, maximum £99. So yeah, that will run from April to April 23 to 24. Um, I would just add this, you know, everyone, when we're talking about energy, when it comes to businesses and all we're hearing is, oh, the scheme has been reduced. Uh, most people will have a bit of fear when they hear that statement. But the reason the context here is the reason the scheme is being reduced is because wholesale prices have significantly come down. Gas prices have halved. In fact, they're cheaper now than they were pre pre the um, the Russian invasion. So I don't want people to be concerned thinking, oh, are my energy bills about to shoot up? Uh, the rates Kieran was mentioning there is the, the government have essentially set a benchmark and they said anything above this this is where we're giving you the discount, whereas the benchmarks are running below the government cap at the moment. So, um, you know, to give you some examples, Kieran and I were just chatting before we came on to say last time we were on this, we were talking to people about how we were helping our customers to mitigate uh, significant rises in their energy bills, whereas now what we're doing is renewing and getting them savings. And, you know, to give you an example, we had a client uh, yesterday where uh, their bill was 59,000 for annual bill, um, and that's now come down to 27,000. And that's before we talk about any energy uh, discount scheme. So just to say things are looking up in the wholesale market that will start trickling through uh, into our bills um, in the next quarter. Order. So it's yeah. it's generally better news all around Ian from the last time we were we were here with you. Yeah. So important takeaway is: Do you know when your fixed term contract starts uh, and ends? Um, because it's a crucial time to hopefully take advantage of these newer lower rates. 
I, mean, I was going to say, what what are the eligibility requirements to get to get these new discounts? Is is that is it, it, it all hinge? It's, it's, yeah, it, it, it's it's eligible for kind of all all businesses, charities, hospitals. I mean, uh, you you can go onto the Gov, Gov website, but it, it will automatically apply to you as as a business. There's nothing you need to do in terms of register or or sign up or anything like that. Okay, and what's the best thing that people can do if they want to try and get their uh, their energy bills down? Yeah, so sorry, and just one of the in terms of sure. eligibility, it, it, it's applying. You must have a have had a fixed term contract from December twenty twenty one and onwards, and it's applying to businesses that 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 have that. Uh, oh. And then what they should do if they if they want to get new quotes, if they don't even know where they're at in their renewal cycle, but want to know what's going on, uh, they can upload their bill um, on Sweet Funding. And then one of the energy team advisors will, will be in touch and can get different quotes across the market for you to show you what what you can will be looking at uh when it when it comes to your time to renew yeah because as a refresher i know we probably went deep on this on the previous webinars but business energy is very different to personal energy every business customer has a bespoke offer to them so therefore as andrea said make sure you take advantage of that opportunity when you're up for renewal and scan the market and see what the best possible option are and i know ian we've had some questions come in about about energy efficiency, particularly around uh, lighting and, and areas like that. And um, one of the most common uh, grants in the in this space is kind of the green recovery um, innovation grant, uh, which is distributed through uh, your um, LEPs or, or growth hubs. Um, so, or else you can check with your local council if they're able to dish this out. But in essence, what you'll be able to get access to is usually between 1,000 and 10,000 pounds or 50% of the cost of investment in, in new lighting to, to create more efficiency. If you are really ramping up your um, investment in kind of green energy in a, in a big way, uh, you also have the SEG scheme or the Smart Export uh, Guarantee Scheme, which came in in January 2020. And what that allows you to do is not only obviously uh, produce green energy through solar to wind, um, uh, hydro, you can actually sell that back into the grid and get paid for the extra electricity that you're generating. And if you want to learn further about that, you can register that with SEG or get further details on the Offgen website. Yeah. And just, just another, you're again, sitting there thinking, where do I start? you know yes i want to have a more energy efficient warehouse or or factory or whatever it is um usually uh, so there are 38 what are known as growth hubs around the country and these are business hubs uh, where the government has teams of advisors and various grants that are distributed. They're all on suite, by the way. So all you've got to do is put in your company details and we'll bring up what's what's open and what you're eligible for right now. But essentially what they do is they give you um, a voucher where you can um, hire a consultant. Um, it's usually for £5,000. They come in, they do an energy audit, tell you what you can do to make your building more efficient. And then you can apply for the grant thereafter towards the project cost of making your building uh, more efficient. So there's all of those um, options that are are out there as well. Excellent. So uh, we, well, I know Andrea, you and I often talk about how the how we shouldn't treat business business finances like personal finances. So my my heating is off, and my swoop hoodie is on. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about while, while I've got you R and D? How are R and D tax credits changing? Because I know that's been yeah. that's been quite a big thing for us as well. Yes, I call it the big ouch moment. Um, yes. it, 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 there is no two ways about it. It's bad news uh, for for us small and medium businesses. It was good news for, for big business uh, who carry out R&D. They got an increase in their tax credit from 13% to 20%, but us lowlies down here, um, ours were cut. So I'm going to give you the good news and the bad news. So, um, so what's changing? All of these changes are coming into play in the new tax year. So get out all of the, all the things we're about to talk about. You've still got time for this current tax year um, before we move into the next one. Um, what's changing in, in the new year? So uh, on the plus side, uh, previously, if you're a tech business, um, software business, etc., um, you usually have 
expensive licensing costs um, and data processing costs with a, a provider like Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, uh, GCP, some of these, and, and for you know substantial uh, bills. Ours is around 300,000 a year, to give you an example. Um, those costs were not eligible. Uh, in the new tax year, they will be eligible. So that's the, the, plus, the plus side. Um, everything goes downhill after this. Uh, so then we get to the new tax year, what's happening? Um, so what used to happen was you would um, add up all of your eligible R&D expenditure, you'd get your total cost, and you'd uplift that by to 130%. So you'd multiply it by 1.3. And that was then what your, your R&D tax deduction would be against your, your profits or enhancing your losses. Now, instead of multiplying by 1.3, you're multiplying it by 0.86. So a massive jump from 130% down to 86%. That's the first hit. The second hit then is um, for those businesses who were loss making, traditionally what you would do is you would ask for a cash refund for your tax credit. And what you would do in, in that instance is you'd apply a, a, a tax rate of 14.5%. So what your total eligible amount was enhanced up, then you'd say, well, 14.5% of that I can elect to have back in cash. That 14.5% has now come down to 10%. So two hits. One, hmm. how much is eligible going down uh, from 130% to 86%. And the second one is the actual cash that you can get back the usual rate was 14.5, now going down to 10. Um, this is huge. Uh, if you were an R&D intensive business like we are, um, just to give you an example, for us, uh, that will cost us about 150,000 next year in our, in our R&D tax credit. Um, so these are substantial changes coming. So uh, the, the last point I would make is another limitation that they're creating on R&D spend, particularly if you're a software business and you're using, let's say, um, tech talent in Poland or Ukraine or uh, outside of the UK. A lot of us have offshore teams. Um, the expenditure on those teams is not allowed. Activities have to happen in the UK. So where you were using those, they will no longer be eligible. So a couple of things, if I, you sitting there today, if you're like us and um, looking at your R&D uh, tax changes, a few things is um, try and bring forward any costs that you may have with your offshore talent into this tax year. Um, you know, try and delay your data processing costs into next year because that, that's a plus side. Um, and try and see if there is additional things that you were about to put off into 2023 that you can bring in so you can get the best tax credit rate as opposed to the one that's coming next year. Um, and so that's essentially what's going on with, with R&D, um, Ian. I'm afraid it's not the best news. One, one, one thing we were chatting about um, that might be relevant to some SMEs is, as Andrea touched on, we have offshore tech, uh, technical resources in different markets that wouldn't be eligible but we as a business do also have other locations that we operate yeah. in. Um, so as an SME, you, if you do operate in other countries or jurisdictions, it's important to see what that government uh, offers. Lots of other countries out there offer very advantageous uh, R&D uh, tax schemes, particularly when you are hiring technical talent. Um, uh, in particular, one, one we're looking at at the moment is, is in the Canadian market, uh, where you can get uh, very advantageous ones. The Australian market is also very generous as well. So just to say, if you do have other operating units in your business, have a look at those jurisdictions and see what's on offer as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say the government uh, has come out with a consultation paper, which we will be partaking in uh, with regards to the R&D tax changes that have happened and the unification of R&D between SME and large enterprise. So uh, we'll watch this space and we'll update as we go. OK, Johnson Samuyewa has just asked exactly the question I was about to ask, which is, uh, if this is your first R&D claim, do you have to make a pre-claim notification? And the answer right. is... Yes. Six yes, you do. Forward. It's going to be six months, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yes, six months. Actually, yes, yeah, just on the processing side of things, um, all claims have to be made digitally now. And absolutely right. Um, if this is your first one and you intend to get in there quick and tell them that you're going to do that, you've got a six month window to let them know. OK, let's move on to SEIS. What are the changes to SEIS? Because this is 
hopefully a slightly slightly brighter yeah. story. Is, he like gets it. the good stories. <laughs> I get the bad ones. <laughs> yeah, but we have ripped off the plaster. What's what are the good is the best EIS? <laughs> positivity to the day um well just to say that these changes kick in from april 2023 so uh, there's a lot of seis activity happening right now because we're coming to the end of the tax year a lot of investors and funds of seis eis and venture capital trust funds are looking to deploy capital so if you are looking for investment right now a bit of a plug for a uh, swoop equity team uh, they're really smashing out the, the term sheets at the moment. So please get your, your, your pitches in pre-March 31st. In terms of the changes to the SEIS scheme right now, uh, as an eligible business for SEIS, uh, you can get up to £150,000 uh, investment uh, under that scheme. And an individual investor can invest up to £100,000. And for that, either the fund or the investor can get up to 50% back from HMRC pretty much straight away. And then if that business was not to succeed for whatever reason, you could get a further 25% back. So in, in effect, you're risking 25% of your capital. So what the government have now said is from April 2023, they're going to expand some of those limits. So if I am a business within my first 36 months of trading, so the, the moment I make my first sale, that's when the SEIS clock kicks in, not when you register the business, when you make that sale. And the good news is instead of 150,000, you can now take 250,000 pounds under SEIS and an individual, individual investor can invest up to 200,000 pounds in that business. So that's pretty awesome news for any businesses uh, looking to raise privately, friends, family, external investors that want to take advantage of the scheme. And obviously those investors or friends and family can get- Family no. Oh, well, it depends how close the relation yeah. is. <laughs> Cousins are okay. Uh, uh, not your mom and dad. Uh, but you 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 can you can get obviously get benefit from the scheme and, and get that cash 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 back, which is which is really really uh, positive because it's been a it's been a great scheme and, and really allowed a lot of uh, young companies get access to, to capital. So it's, it's a very positive thing and 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 something that we really really welcome. Mm -hmm. And then something that people will rightly point out is, oh, I want to raise right now, or how do I get advantage of this this the, these new bits and bobs? Uh, so there are things that you can you can instruments that you can put into place whereby you can raise now or get cash in the door now, but hold back share allowances or shares. Uh, certificates to pass the date so you've got advanced share option uh, agreements where you you could take investment for uh from investors but you delay the offering of the shares until after the date at which they obviously you negotiate a discount for the, for them putting up the cash now or you can look at convertible loan notes which is a debt instrument where you can take uh the cash in now and pay the the debt back at a, a perceived uh, stated period of time unless that debt then converts into equity the the difference between the convertible loan note and the advanced share agreement is convertible loan note has higher uh, uh precedence and they get paid out first and obviously one's a debt instrument and one's a uh, purely an equity instrument yeah so great news honestly um the SCI scheme has has been super successful and it's why we have so many startups in the UK um and what I would say is that 150 was just not enough um you were you were trying to eke that out uh before you could go for your next raise so having that extra cushion in there of that extra hundred thousand um it's unbelievable news and if you're a business that has already taken your 150. Um, as Kieran said, make sure you haven't gone into your EIS allowance yet. There are still ways with which you can extend that out to get the full 250. So come and talk to us if you're in any of those positions. And also, if you are raising at the moment, we have a number of SEIS funds that are highly active. We have a lot of term sheets out at the moment uh, for new businesses. So um, it's a busy season for us. And, and the terms have expanded slightly because it used to be two years and now it's three years three. isn't it uh, yeah, Vicky Smith, big, big plus big yeah plus. Vic, Vicky Smith has just sent us a question is there any allowance made for time frames for SEIS for businesses shut down legally for COVID I'm guessing if you were shut down for COVID that puts you over the three years but did... yeah I mean because there hasn't been anything like specifically around that but what they would 
usually used to judge it is like, when did you make that first sale? So if you made that pre-COVID, shut the business down, but kept it dormant, then you're not going to be technically eligible. So it's probably not a smooth sailing path. So some considerations might be what's the state of the business now and it, 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 is there merit in in I don't know winding starting that winding that down and, and and starting a new one to, to take advantage of that or other schemes like the the startup loan scheme. Okay, let's uh, let's move on then. We've got uh, super deduction. So April twenty twenty three sees the end of the super deduction allowance, which has allowed companies to claim one hundred and thirty percent deduction. The government loves their 130 percent, don't they? They do. Uh, okay. <laughs> so that allows companies to claim 130 percent deduction against qualifying expenditure. What's yeah. uh, Andrea? Talk talk me through this. Yeah, it was basically the government trying to really incentivize and kickstart investment by businesses post COVID. Um, and so essentially, if you're a business looking to um, invest in new equipment, um, the difference between super deduction and annual investment allowance was um, super deduction could not be applied to secondhand um, um, equipment or, or purchases. So, so there is there are some differences. But let's say you were going for, for some new, new equipment. Uh, whatever the cost of that was, you enhance it by 130%. So you're getting an effective uh, tax relief of 24.7% on your um, expenditure. Um, that is coming to an end uh, on March 31st. It was just a temporary scheme to kickstart that investment. Um, so, so that's that. Now, if you are still have a schedule of assets that you're looking to invest, it may, and I'll, and I'll qualify why I'm saying may here, it may work out that your super deduction is a better scheme for you to, to use rather than the annual investment allowance. So let's assume it's you've got to March 31st, super deduction is now over, what are your options? Well, the other more permanent scheme that the government has had to incentivize investment has been the annual investment allowance. Now, in the past, the limit with which, so let's just say you, you have had a schedule of assets you were you were looking to invest in. Um, it used to be that the limit uh, for which you would get a tax break was two hundred thousand pounds. Then that went temporarily up to a million, and now in the last autumn statement, the government has made that a permanent um, position. So from here on in, you're going to have a million. So you can acquire assets up to a million pounds and use that 100% against your profits, uh, your taxable profits. So uh, if I take this in, in conjunction with, let's say you're a business um, that has, I don't know, 350,000 in profits, okay? Uh, and we'll come on to it in a moment, your tax rate, your corporation tax rate is about to change as well. Um, so let's just say you've 350,000 in profit and you're looking at acquiring assets of 300,000 pounds. Well, in the new 2023, your corporation tax rate uh, would work out at over 87,000 pounds, okay? If you acquire those assets for 300,000, use your annual investment allowance, you suddenly have reduced your taxable profits to 50,000. So now your tax bill is nine and a half thousand. So you're saving yourself 78,000 pounds on a tax bill, and that's gone towards your uh, investment into your new assets. Um, and so this, this is also eligible, um, your leased assets are also eligible under um, the annual investment allowance, whereas uh, not so under the super deduction. So you're able to claim for your future lease payments. You're not allowed to claim for your interest or your charges, but you're allowed to claim for the future lease payments. So, so it's kind of good news and bad news. And where, where in the past we would have said, oh, super deduction gives you 24.7 percent uh, relief rate and then we would have said well annual investment allowance you can deduct it against your profit so probably about a 19 percent uh, uh, effective tax relief rate but with corporation tax rates going up uh, the annual investment allowance might be worth closer to the 25 percent uh, relief so not too big a change in terms of super deduction and and annual investment allowance um, as I say there's pluses and minuses to both um, but if you are in the lower tax bracket, uh, then I'd be using super deduction now before March 31st. 
And by okay. the way, this is all very convoluted. Uh, so we do have examples and I will be doing another dedicated video on with my board behind me showing you when to use it and when not, because it's a lot of numbers to be thrown out on a webinar. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've run out of fingers to count this all up. <laughs> um, but what about, what about corporation tax? Because we know that's changing and, and it's tapered, yeah. isn't it? So, so how does it that is. work? Yeah, again, they don't make it easy for yeah. us all. So again, we'll do another whiteboard on, on that uh, video. So it's very simple if you have profits less than uh, 50,000 pounds. So if, if that is the case, 50,000 and below, there is no change. It's still 19% uh, corporation tax rate. If then you have profits that are somewhere between 50,000 and 250,000, so then we're going to look at a tapered relief. And I'll come back to that. If your profits are over 250,000, uh, then you're up to, without question, you're up to 25% uh, corporation tax rate, okay? Big jump. The bit in the middle between 50,000 and 250,000, the actual rate that they apply to the profits in that range is 26.5%. Now you might be thinking, hang on a second, why are they charging me 26.5% for the bit below the 250 and then the 250 is at 25%. The way the tapered relief works is the government is trying to slowly build you up to make sure that if you hit 250,000, uh, that you're at 25% relief because you might have some, some tax, creative tax uh, planning going on there. So that's how it works. Um, so a big jump, again, if I take my example of my, my 350,000 um, profit, the difference for a company like that is an additional 21,000 in tax uh, this, this coming tax year. Um, so hence, good planning in terms of your investments, uh, whether that's computer equipment, uh, you know, kitting out your place, whether it's plant and machinery, whether it's your logistics vans. Um, another one we get asked a lot is, well, what about if I have business cars? Business cars do not fall under annual investment allowance. If it's an electric car, you get what's known as a first year allowance. It's exactly the same. You get to write 100% off against your, your profits, um, but it doesn't come in as part of your 1 million limit um, uh, for your year on terms of your, your capital um, expenditure. So, and sorry, the, the not last point, I uh, don't want to get too technical is, let's say you're in the wonderful position of you want more than a million pounds worth of assets. What do you do then? Well, you fill up your, your limit to your million, and then you move on to what's known as the writing down allowance. Um, not as um, favorable as the annual investment, but still there are allowances there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think we're going to have, I, I can't oh, wait for the, uh, for the whiteboard to come out now. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, Kieran, what about income tax and dividend allowance? Because that's, that's quite a big thing for, for company founders and, and business owners, isn't it? Yeah, well, but more so probably the employees with, within the business themselves and, and some consideration uh, for, for them as to, as to how they want to play it out because there's a couple of things at play. I suppose on, on the top line and the things that the, <clears throat> the top uh, interest rate tax of 45% is going to come down from 150 to 125. Um, so that's going to start affecting those people earning uh, above that, that 125 bracket where they were paying 40% before. Um, the, our, the other area as well to, to say in, in, in this space is the capital gains tax. So if you were um, selling off assets or, or, or drawing dividends, uh, you had an allowance of uh, 12,300. As of this April, it's gonna be 6,000. As of next April, it's gonna be 3,000. Um, there are other ways in which kind of employees as well can think about maybe mitigating some of that income tax hit. Uh, one of that is in salary sacrifice. So that's where you lower what you get paid uh, so that more goes into your pension, your corporate pension, and you get more uh, cash in your bank balance at the end, end of the month. So a bit of a win-win, uh, but something that employees would need to opt in um, and if employers aren't familiar with it, and something for them to, to work with their with their pension provider but um it, it's something that's easily accessible once uh, employees or employers are set up for it so uh, we definitely encourage small business owners to to look at that scheme and um, employees as well to, to to look at the the salary sacrifice scheme and um, also 
uh, there's still good incentives to invest personally into your own pension outside of whatever work pension you have in place. Um, so you can decide to invest personally in, in, into a pension uh, each month or whenever whenever you can. Uh, the government will add 25% on top of whatever you're investing. Um, but not only that, at the end of the tax year, you'll be able to get um, a, to claim back uh, a further uh 25% on 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 what you what you put in during during that period so another way to mitigate any increases in 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 income tax and uh, we know also sorry I didn't say at the top but the, the basic rate of income tax um has 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 jumped as as well okay uh, and what about what about capital gains tax how's that changing yes so so, so the, at the moment that's 12300 Right. Um, up until the end of March, it uh, goes to six thousand from April, and then goes to three thousand the following April. That's the allowance. So the yeah. rate hasn't changed; it's the allowances that have changed. Ah, okay. Yeah. Fab. Um, Kieran, before we got on, you were very excited about some quick and dirty hacks you have for saving money. So this is this is your opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, I, I'm just conscious that we're hitting everyone with like, this isn't great. This is going up. This is going up, with the exception of SEIS. But because all these interest rates are going up, it means that deposit rates are also going up. So any cash that you have idle, you can earn a lot more money on it if you're smart about it. So you also have optionality in it. So you can put that cash into an instant savings account, which means that you can access very easy at any given uh, period of time, or you can put it away for a year, 18 months, two years, three years, four years, five years, depending on, on how much you need that cash. Um, yeah, and just on that, uh, like a lot of companies um, like ourselves and, and God, most most companies, you're either in one situation, you may uh, have a separate reserve account uh, that you're putting your tax uh, uh, funds into. So your, your VAT or your corporation tax bill and you're setting that aside. Uh, I cannot tell you the thousands of businesses that keep that in a current account. Uh, where they could just quickly switch it into one of the accounts Kieran's talking about. So that's one example and, of where you might have. And, you, and there's nothing to stop you from having a multiple ones because we know the deposit protection scheme is at 85,000 pounds. So if that, if most banks go bust, very, very, very unlikely, you're only protected up to 85,000 pounds. So you could be in the envious position of that, being in the ability to put lots of different 85,000 pounds around. <laughs> but essentially what's on the market at the moment. So if you're looking for kind of easy access, instant savings, you're kind of looking at kind of around the 2% mark, uh, Shawbrook and Alderboard Bank are kind of offering that. If you're going into the 12 month bracket, Alica have a good offering just at 3.02%. And um, if you're then going into the kind of 18, two year uh, and above, uh, best in terms of rates on market are Virgin Money and State Bank of India, where you can get kind of between three and a half percent to 4.15%. So again, if you've sizable amount of money with three and a half, four percent being a play, it's definitely worth considering in terms of getting cash back uh, without having to, to, to do anything. So definitely take a look at it. Some of the variables you'll have to think through is like some banks might pay monthly interest, daily interest at the time of closing, yearly interest. So think about those different parameters. Um, Andrea mentioned one of the positives in the R&D area is the, your Azure or your GCP or AWS is going to be eligible to get a uh, spend back on it. But what often young small businesses aren't aware of is all of these large Amazon, Microsoft, uh, Google have really enviable startup or scale up offerings for businesses, particularly technology business, where you can get access to hundreds of thousands of free credit that can go on your spend. So as a business swoop, we've had about $250,000 of free credit from Microsoft when we're a startup. We're now in the scale-up program. We're currently benefiting from about $128,000, which is a mixture of credits, uh, software licenses. So again, most businesses need to put their data somewhere, store things or investing in technology check if you're eligible for these schemes because they're they're really 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 good um another thing is your expense management and subscriptions we all have kind of moved to having lots of these different tools and it's a nightmare uh, we, even ourselves trying to keep track of them when are they due when's it up for 
Most of them are US based, so you're losing out on an FX transaction every time you pay it. Uh, we just discovered it. Was, I have no affiliation to this company, but we we just discovered a company called Cladara, where you can put all your subscriptions in there. You can set virtual cards against every subscription, no FX charges, and you get a kickback of 250 quid on your expenses. So it becomes a net cost. So that's just a little discovery we discovered. So I would like, encourage people to, to check that out. I think that's really, really good. Um, the other one thing is, uh, as you're coming out with long, longer office leases, offices are a lot easier to adapt to. There's a lot of virtual working out there. There's platforms like Desana, where you can kind of sign up, buy office credits, use them at will, go to different locations. So things that were traditionally fixed costs are moving to variable costs. So th th there's lots of positives out there as well if, if you're looking for ways to kind of save or, or, or make money outside of the government tax near to the hills. It's, it, I think it's a, it's, it's one of the things that we've come off the back of the uh, of the pandemic is that everybody's suddenly have to become a lot more flexible and they're going how can we make this how can we make this useful to to customers out there in the in the real world who who need us to be flexible so that's yeah that's quite good um, and top but, tip by the way my final final top tip never ever 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 use your bank to make an international payment yeah. <laughs> that is the cardinal sin of throwing money out the window. So never do that. Um, yeah, you can switch your bank again. You can yeah, save money that way. You can. I'm just saying there are, there are uh, other ways to, to do international transfers, but never use your bank. <laughs> and, Andrea has spoken. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, Talk to us. There's so many. We have saved. Oh, my God. That, because we've got, uh, you know, we all have remote teams all over the place. Uh, and you've got payments going all over the world now. It's normal. Um, yeah. And we've saved thousands personally ourselves. So, um, yeah, talk to us and we'll we'll share all of that with you. OK, question, question is just going from P. Thomas, who clearly has another tab open and, and waiting to leap on and, and put your call to action into action. How do you spell the name of that company for paying for U.S. subscriptions? Oh, uh, Cledara, C-L-E-D-A-R-A. -A. Cledara. Uh, and that's not a sponsor. Yeah, it's uh, and, and we it, just use them. It, 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 <laughs> it's just like like things like your LinkedIn or your Slack or your Google. You, you get you get a clip on on all of that, so it mitigates that. It also one thing that's really pisses me off is uh, when your subscriptions come to renewals with most of these kind of tech based SaaS companies. They don't tell you your subscription is coming up, and then they have a terms and conditions in there that if you miss. The day to serve notice then you automatically get enrolled into another 12 months and it's a real kick in the teeth especially some of them have awful billing structures where you have to pay in quarters or up front so if you use a tool to kind of centralize the subscriptions obviously you can get the added benefit of saving on on things like fx but you can set the reminders as to when the subscription is up for renewal so you don't get hit in that awful scenario where you've missed missed the window and you're in like an absolute haggling battle trying to trying to get out of their terms and conditions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I think we've all been there. Okay. Um, we've got some audience questions. Let's move on to those. Um, how can I use my EIS situation to raise funds, Andrea? Yeah. Oh well, great news if you have it. Um, so there are hundreds of um, SEIS, EIS funds and investors in the UK. Um, we have hundreds of them on, on our suite platform. So if you are raising at the moment, feel free to register and upload your pitch deck. Um, and the equity team here will, will get in touch with you. Um, other options you have available to you are you can go on the EIS Association and on there they will list their directory of members and then that essentially could be your own list to go and um and raise directly yourself um another one to check out is the uk business angels association so that's not funds it's individuals themselves or syndicates or groups that come together specifically looking for SEIS and EIS um, uh, companies. So that's another route that you could go down. So, and this is the best time to be raising because as Kieran mentioned, 
a lot of funds have raised from individuals and they need to use their tax um, relief allowance in this tax year. Uh, so they're busy. If they miss that deadline, they have cost their investor a lot. Mm. So there's a lot mm. of activity that goes on at this time of the year. So it's the best time to be raising it, for sure. It completely goes against there's a lot of talk in the equity industry globally, like, oh, investors are sitting in the, on their pockets. They're, they're kind of waiting. There's a lot of white dry powder. But in the UK, if you have an EIS for VCD, fund you don't have that you have to get that cash out into the market so if you are a business that needs to raise right now specifically target the eis vct space okay so if you're looking to raise money the ball is is kind of in also, your court yes check where you are locally as well because there's even better advantages so you've got the midlands engine investment fund uh so they'll have specific strategic funds that will target east midlands west midlands uh you'll have the northern powerhouse fund again targeting for funds in, in the northwest so again check where you're based and seeing if there's people in your area that are specifically incentivized by the british business bank or otherwise to invest in businesses in your area like even in the angels you've got like the dorset angels globe yeah you, you, it's you, very you can have it, it's kind of nationally there is your list but then also think about where you are regionally so for example if that person is in london another route for them they might have half of their round covered well if one of their lead investors has some knowledge or industry network that they can bring to the table as well as their investment they can go to the angel co-fund and get the round uh, matched by the, the government angel co-fund. So uh, these are other routes that are out there. Don't just think you have to get it all from, from one place um, and all from EIS investors. You could match it, as Kieran mm -hmm. said, with some of the British Business Bank um, uh, funds as well. So angel co-fund in London, Midlands Engine, Northern Powerhouse, et cetera. Sure thing. Okay, um, Kieran, you're our... Uh, energy expert, I guess. How how did the changes for 2023 affect new investment in the longer duration energy storage technologies? Yeah, so I think there there was a significant competition run uh, by Innovate UK that, that has subsequently closed, uh, encouraging uh, companies to to pitch and uh, and give funds out. The first 6.7 million has been invested in, in total. They're giving out 68 million to this competition, which is all about storing energy and moving away from lithium into other sources um, such as hydrogen. And um, while that competition is closed. We see this as a huge uh, facet of the government strategy and where they're going to be putting investment into and grant competitions into. Um, so obviously encourage people to continuously check Innovate UK and, 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 and updates in, in that area. That being said, there's consistently general innovative funds that this will be applicable to. Right now, you've got smart energy grants, or sorry, not smart energy grants, but smart grants uh, from Innovate UK, uh, which is a 20 million fund that is open at the moment, where on your own, you can apply up to 250,000 pounds as a business. But if you if you, if you you partner with other businesses, you, you, you can go for larger sums of, of money. Um, so I would say if you are in the business of creating energy storing storage or investing in that innovation, particularly in the hydrogen area while the larger competition run by innovate uk last year is, is closed do keep an eye on use the smart grounds competition currently um but it, it is, a, is a hot topic and again outside of grants uh it's it's, it's really really uh big the clean tech uh, vc industry is is really really popular right now and again an attractive one there you've also if, if you're up and running you've got innovate uk loans uh particularly for it for this, this these types of operations mm -hmm. I would also okay. check UK yeah. ORI and oh, again all of these brands and VCs are, are on suit but uh, UK ORI looks at uh, they also have research challenges that come out that may be, may be of use um, and then the other area that the government has announced more funding into our catapult centres um, and so there'll be there'll be uh, a catapult centre for uh, clean tech businesses and they are very helpful uh, as well so it's not just giving you money it's about getting you a network and connections where you may need a proof of concept um partner that sort of thing so yeah it's a good time to be in that in that industry uh here in the uk 
Okay, maybe, maybe in a similar field, we've got someone asking about investment opportunities for an ambitious engineering startup with no immediate profit generation, but huge opportunity in the future. What about these um, these pre revenue yeah. companies? I think um, it's uh, like this. This is actually where Swoop was born out of. We were helping engineering intensive businesses um, who had no revenues for years, and it was like, how do you keep going? And um, like the cycle starts off, it's pretty scrappy. You've got to uh, get to proof of concept. You've got to get to somewhere um, to be able to show, to validate something for, for investors. So yes, you're, you need to use things like the startup loans. Uh, you need to make sure you build in your R&D uh, strategy into that. You need to build in your patent box strategy into that as well. So there's other benefits you can get from being a knowledge intensive business. Um, then on top of that, we need to be looking at grants for you. In addition to, as Kieran said, there are not just angel investors at the at the sort of the early stages. You know, there's a lot of angel investors who've exited their own businesses, and some of them have an engineering uh, slant. So they've exited engineering businesses where they want to come back in. Um, but there are also VC funds. Um, that are very much involved at the early stage. Uh, some of them are, are funds that have partnered with the British Business Bank where they're looking for exactly what um, they've just described, early stage, um, highly innovative engineering, pretty capital intensive, I'm sure, for uh, the person who's asked that question. So it's it's kind of, you're going to use the array of the funding landscape in the UK, but it's absolutely doable. Uh, we've done it for many, many customers. That's how we started life. Um, and and I think, yeah, things like um, yeah. Uh, Mercia and Foresight. Foresight. specific funds in, in, the, in the engineering space. Yes, yeah. uh, and they're based also in the Midlands Engine Fund as well. So yeah. a good place for engineering. Yeah, and it, it, as Andrea said, it, it, it's looking at all the different pockets and maybe bringing it together. You might want some grants, some equity, but also some of the debt funding. Use your startup uh, grant allowance uh, or startup loan allowance of £25,000 per director within the first three years. Uh, but also, if you are, if you can, if you can model it out and look at your cash flow scenario, whether you're getting grant or equity funding in, then maybe looking at asset based lending where you are purchasing certain pieces of equipment uh whether that's on lease and you can work that into your cash flow model that might be something that's worth worth looking at uh, given given this sector's need for some of those high uh, capital purchases okay yeah. uh got another question here which is is there funding to replace workshop lighting to be energy efficient so i, I guess we yeah. can broaden this out to any anything that people yeah. are doing to make themselves greener yeah, I think that just relates to what we were chatting about earlier, um, where, yes, there are actual green recovery grants to make your business uh, more um, uh, less carbon intensive. Um, so there's those typical grants. There's the vouchers we mentioned where you can um, get them through your local growth hub. Uh, some of your local authorities have it. But if you just um, again uh, on Sweep, you'll see whether they're uh, available in your local area um, where you can get an audit of your premises, uh, work out your energy efficiency plan, and then get a grant uh, up to £10,000 towards those project costs. So um, yeah, there, there is funding out there uh, to become more energy efficient. Okay, uh, question here, I, I promise this is not from me. Are there any changes to film tax credit? <laughs> and no, there's, there isn't any changes to film tax credit, so you can still get up to 25% back. What has started was a consultation in on the 17th of November that's running up until February 23rd uh, of, of this year. Um, the reason for the consultation isn't necessarily to change too much the scheme because in the main uh, production in film has boomed since this scheme has come, come in. So in effect, it's done a really, really good job. But what you've had is with uh, the rise of your, your Netflix, your Prime, your Apple TV, you've got lots of different categories. You've got high-end TV, TV, you've got animation and you've got children's TV as well as film. So I think what the government is trying to do is simplify and aggregate it into, into one system. Um, even the, the kind of murmurs that are coming out, at the moment you're able to get 80% of, of, of costs are, allowed, are, are eligible. And um, so either that's 80% of costs occurred um, in UK or European economic areas, uh, they're they're talking about actually lifting the 80% the, the uh, cap. Uh, the one thing that maybe people won't be 
enamored with too much is is right now you have to have a minimum spend of a million pounds per uh, broadcast hour to get access to to the credits um, and what, what the kind of government sense is actually production costs like everything has has risen massively with things like inflation over the last couple of years so it's not particularly hard to get to that number so they might look at increasing that that threshold um for those not familiar with uh, film tax credits uh, in order to be eligible to, to get access. First, you need to get registered with the BFI uh, and pass a kind of a, a 13 point exam and get at least 18 points to, to get the exam. Once the BFI give you the, the rubber stamp of, 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 of approval, usually takes up about 21 days. Um, essentially, you need to be seen to be a, a, a British uh, pr production. 10% uh, of your course uh, in pre-production, post-production photography have to be in, in the UK. Um, and it has to be uh, for kind of a cin cinema release. Cinema release is kind of like the, the main eligibility criteria. But ultimately, after doing all that, 80% of your, 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 your course are eligible and you can get a 25% tax uh, rebate, which is pretty awesome. Unfortunately, I don't think any of the stuff we produce for Swoop in the content department ever <laughs> quite <laughs> reaches <laughs> well, I, mean, I, mean, I, I would love a spaceship and a dinosaur to be in there. But... <laughs> That's a bit... Okay, uh, next question is, I have bad credit. How can I possibly get a business loan? Andrea, is there, is there a way through for you people? Can. Yes. Yes. Um, this is a regular question we get asked, do not feel bad about having bad credit. Um, so it, there's two, two credit scores that matter. One is your company credit score and one is your personal credit score as a director. Um, if you don't know your company credit score or you think it's bad or you need to improve it, uh, we've got a partner um, that we work with um, where we look at your credit score. Um, you can get that on, on Swoop and then we, we help improve that before you go for funding to be able to increase the amount of credit you'll be able to get. Um, if it's your personal one, um, you can use companies like Check My File to, to improve it. All of that said, you are still eligible for uh, uh, lending, for example, uh, the government uh, loan scheme, the startup loan scheme. Um, they they are not as, yes, they ask for your personal credit score, but it's not the underlying factor as to why they give it to you. And as Kieran mentioned, you can get 25000 per um, uh, promoter of the business, so director or founder of the business, um, and that you can have a capital repayment holiday of six months and it's six percent APR and you can extend the repayment over six years so it's really good um, scheme as long as you're not trading for more than three years you can still apply for that and um, the other area that you can get funding um, for your business uh, with poor credit score is there are non-for-profit organizations that the government um, has allowed um, to run what used to be known as the recovery loan scheme. It's the it's the latest version of that. And so if you've been um, rejected for credit elsewhere, uh, then we would normally take it to those uh, funds where they, they look at the merit, merits of the business. Um, but I would say this is not a, a permanent position that you're in. Uh, credit scores can be improved substantially mm -hmm. and quickly. Um, so don't worry if something's happened in the past. It is an area that can be... Uh, looked at and, and improved pretty pretty quickly uh okay and slightly allied to that as well i think uh, is it possible to get a loan when i have zero capital yeah. yes <laughs> so, <laughs> we did <laughs> so, yeah. we, we probably say too much about that startup loan scheme uh you don't have to be uh it's pre-revenue uh you, you you can get access to that the nice thing obviously all of a sudden, if, if you are pre revenue, it could be pretty daunting. If you're if you're getting given a loan, the, the added advantage with the startup loan scheme is you have a six month interest free period and you can spread the, the repayments back over five years. So you can really mitigate the impact on on your on your cash flow. Um other areas that you, you might not be at a revenue state but are able to, to get access to it. Uh, we touched earlier on about that engineering scenario whereby you might have raised some a grant or you might have raised uh, some equity uh, so you can raise debt alongside that uh, whether it's uh, secured against that that grant or equity or you can raise it against a piece of machinery or equipment that that you you, you need to buy it might even just be something like a computer or a laptop but that that, that, that is all feasible as well 
And the, the other thing to mention is when people think loans, traditionally we all think of, oh, I get a fixed amount and I'm going to pay a fixed amount back every single month. And uh, so the, the person asking that question is probably thinking, I don't have any capital to repay this. Well, um, if you're up and running for three months and you're taking payments in online or you're taking payments in on a credit card terminal, um, then there is what's known as revenue based finance. And so what they look at is, um, oh, well, we'll give you uh, an advance of credit and then you're going to repay um, about 10% of that off your revenues as you grow your revenues every month. So there's lots of flexibility and lots of different products out there now. So the definition of what we all think about loans has completely expanded um, and there's options for every stage of a business, no matter how young you are. And another one, because we'll get killed by Sue if you don't say this, but uh, yeah. obviously sometimes you might not need 10, 20, you need a significant amount of cash. Uh, so commercial mortgages kind of come into play there. And even if you don't have revenue, that's not necessarily how they're looking at you. They're looking at you from a personal credit perspective and what your what assets you have yourself, whether that's uh, property or things like that, that, that you can then leverage to access that commercial mortgage. Um, so that is very much something that you can get access to with a revenue that can sometimes be quite a considerable uh, amount of money yes our commercial mortgages team does seem to have ways and means of, of finding surprising amounts of assets and <laughs> and, and uh they can make amazing things happen according to, to our feedback exactly. so that's that's good we are coming up to time i've got one more question which is can you send me the recording and the answer is yes i can well or rather <laughs> you can find it on social and youtube and i'm sure it will be part of a of a mail out at some point so with that thank you very much indeed we are out of time couple of things before we disappear into the ether first of all uh we would love it if you when you do find this if you want to share it with somebody if you want to catch up on it if you want to to take notes and go through it again you can if you want to give it to somebody else that would find it useful and helpful then uh, by all means please do that and a big thank you to kieran and andrea thanks guys thanks for your questions thank and you. coming along today thanks guys uh and to you the audience that your attention is something we massively value here at swoop the team works every day to make funding as fast and as easy as we possibly can so if you are ever in doubt go to swoopfunding.com that's where you need to be uh, i am ian hawkins wherever you are in the world from me kieran and andrea thanks very much enjoy the rest of your day <laughs>